Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. Today we're continuing our intermediate series by today discussing the true red tail boas, whose Latin name is Boa Constrictor Constrictor. Well, it's Boa Constrictor now. But to be able to differentiate, as many places will still list them, as Boa Constrictor Constrictor for the red tails and Boa Constrictor Imperata for the common and Central American boas, this is a Boa Constrictor Constrictor, the red tail. Don't worry, I'll try and pretend like I know what I'm on about. I'm only kidding. First described by Linnaeus in 1758 as boa constrictor, where it would eventually end up. But it would have been too easy to leave it there. So uh, these are some of the other changes that it went through as well. Ta taxonomists were busy arguing amongst themselves. Boa orophius, also from Linnaeus. Constrictor formoissimus. Constrictor rex serpentum. Constrictor auspex. Constrictor divinilocus. Constrictor aureophus, and they were all by Laurenti in 1768. This is obviously to try and differentiate for our modern day species and subspecies, although I can't find any mention of which one was for which, although I'm really keen on the name Constrictor rex serpentum. I think that's ace. Then Boa Constrictrix by Schneider in 1801. Boa diviniloca by Dumeril and Bibron in 1844. Boa constrictor by Boulanger in 1893. Constrictor constrictor by Griffin in 1916. Constrictor 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 by Stull in 1935. Boa constrictor by constrictor by Forcart in 1951. The argy bargy and back and forth was because they couldn't decide how the red tails and other boas related to the emerald tree boa we now know as Corollus caninus, but previously it was classed as boa caninus, and that's where the, the, the flip flopping from constrictor to boa took place, which I found very interesting when I read it. Anyhow. Forcart proved the validity, so thank God for that. Boa constrictor constrictor, job done. Um, now, uh, it is just boa constrictor now. Like I said, boa imperata has been elevated to full species status. How very nice for them. Uh, and that's the commons and the Central Americans. So all of the things you think of, like Nick's, uh, El Salvador's, all the rest of it, they're now boa imperata. These dudes are boa constrictor. Um, so they occur east of the Andes, um, whereas the commons and Central Americans are west of the Andes. As good as boas are, they have not quite mastered the art of crossing mountain ranges yet, although I'm sure they're working on it. Um, and that's how we can differentiate the two. Countries of their natural range include southern Venezuela, southern Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Guyana, Suriname and French Guiana. Most commonly available in the trade are the Guyana and Suriname varieties, lesser seen is the Peruvian and much more sought after is the Peruvian. Um, the predilection of the red tail fans is these things in the centre of each of the saddles, these are called widow's peaks or peaking and that's what everybody likes. This one's probably only a mid expression peaker, I mean it's pretty enough but you know some of these, these crazy red tail boa dudes are like oh no it's got to be this particular size blah 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 and all the rest of it so uh, it is what it is so they all go for the peaking they selectively uh, keep and try and breed to produce the peaking and uh, they're particularly keen on the silver background color and they try and breed for that as well um, so the, the red tail boas are trickier than the commons and the central american boas in pretty much every way they are nearly always wild caught, which is a complicating factor, which we'll get to in a moment. But aside from that, they have quite delicate tummies. Um, they have a reputation for regurgitating and throwing up meals that are too big. They also, with being true South American rather than Central and Northern South America, do like it slightly cooler than we would uh, anticipate. Um, we would normally keep a common boa at 32, 33 degrees Celsius. In truth, the pure red tails we're going to have at a hot spot of 29 to 30 degrees tops and a cool end dropping down to probably 24, whereas the cool end would be 26 to 27 for their northern cousins. Come here, wriggle one. So, 
But everything from the Amazon basin, and this goes for whether it's anacondas, emerald tree bows, Amazons, whatever, they do prefer it slightly cooler and they like the higher humidity. And this is because of the bowl shape of the topography of the land. So, you know, the, we're, we're going to have the slightly cooler temperatures. We're going to have higher humidity. Higher humidity is created by temperature. So it's hard to create humidity. But nowadays with modern uh, husbandry techniques and tools we have at our disposal, whether that be rain systems or whatever else, things are getting easier all the time and we're working stuff out now. But the reason why we didn't crack them for so long and get them breeding and finally establish them as easily as we did with the, centrals, Sen the Central Americans and the Commons is for this very reason. Um, they keep them too warm, they keep them the same as the Commons and Central Americans, they dehydrate. Um, when they're wild caught they have parasitic burdens I will refer you to the red tail racer video we did the emerald tree bow video we did anything that's wild caught comes with an internal parasite burden will dehydrate at twice the normal speed it's got all these baddies sucking all the life out of it from within so we need to make sure that electrolyte salts and amino acids are replaced that uh, we, we take extra care to make sure that hydration is of premium importance. We do not want the animal to overheat. I would probably suggest initially keeping it in a racking system or similar where it's nice and quiet, where we can have this sort of triage effect, this very um, sterile environment, which is easily cleaned. Um, and after four to six months, we can consider worming them once we've got some weight on them. Now getting weight onto them is harder than we would think. We already know that they don't like the big meals. We know that they regurgitate if we give them the big meals. And what we also know is that they've got a slow metabolism. So if we feed them too regularly, we'll also get the regurgitations or we'll get them shunning food. And realistically, a red tail only wants to be fed every 14 to 21 days. Um, and we'll be waiting for the poo to come before we feed it again. Similar rule of thumb to the animal tree bow really. Now, because of that, come here, where are you going? Because of that, the common boas will reach breeding size, not that they should, but breeders regularly do. Power, breed, power feeders looking at you. Get a female to breeding size within three years and breed them. Even if we could get a red tail to feed that way, it would still take us five or six years to get it to reach sexual maturity, they're slower growing. Uh, they don't pile on the weight the same way. They carry their weight in a different way. They're far leaner for their size, carry much more muscle than they do fat uh, with regards to the commons and Central Americans. So, um, realistically, to raise a captive bred female to breeding size may take you seven years, even the better part of a decade until you're happy. A full bodied, heavy set, seven foot in length, capable of having a litter of young without it damaging her uh, long term so you know these things take time I wouldn't be in a rush to breed true red tails um, so yeah just just take it easy with the food they, they don't appreciate it um, and it will go wrong quickly the premium localities that everyone seems to like are Poke Grum from Suriname Pocalpa from Peru and Equitos from Peru these go for mega money and they are breathtaking and they make this look absolutely horrible and it's not, it's a gorgeous snake. It's just these ones are that good. They're like silver and brick red, well, vermilion red tails. They're absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. So, as well as rearing them and getting the weight on them and developing them in size, they're trickier to breed. The Central Americans and Commons are so many generations deep with captive breeding that they're all a mishmash anyway of what they are. They are easier to cycle. They don't need as deep a cycle because actually they're more equatorial. Um, and it's far easier to get them to go on. The problem is with these having such a big range and we don't know whether they're highland or lowland at the point of import. And we don't know if we bought from one breeder and then another breeder, whether they were highland or lowland forms, unless they had the records, which in truth is highly unlikely. They can be incredibly difficult to pair up. Hybrids do exist. For years people used to sell red tail crosses. Truth be told, that's because your common's easy to breed and the common will shag anything. Um, so it's more a case of that than you actually getting a red tail to click. It's the fact it got caught by a common. 
that's what you need to clear up in your mind because the crosses were a problem in the early to mid 90s people couldn't get the pures to go so they'd use a common except the common was the one that actually copped it and then they just had a load of mutts come out the other end instead of the pure stuff which is a real shame um, so yeah it's there's all sorts of maybe complicating issues adult size for a boy is going to be about six six and a half feet for a girl eight to nine feet uh, a five by two by two for a boy six by two by two for a girl I've always used ceramic bulbs they can dry your air out uh, maybe given their cooler temperatures modern technology like the deep heat projectors could come into their own where we're not get generating masses of heat but we've still got a platform at 28 degrees that the snakes th 29 degrees that the snakes can warm themselves up on um, so that might be a winner that would need to be played with though all my experience comes from using ceramics day night pulse or day night dimmer stats um, they've generally been unproblematic but I've just always took my time I've never rushed them uh, and just m took it very very steady when it came to feeding always use a reliable thermostat uh, always use a reliable thermometer that will back that up so that you know what the temperatures are doing uh, orchid bark as a substrate uh, you could mix that maybe with core um, and cypress mulch so that you can retain the humidity and keep that in there a decent sized water bowl a water bowl that is not going to spill everywhere because you're going to rot your tank. If you're using a wooden viv, then you're going to need to seal it. Well, you're just going to have to seal the shit out of it, basically, because it's, it's so humid. It's either that or use one of the plastic, like Herb Tech or similar uh, plastic solutions that are on the uh, market that are totally um, waterproof, but they're going to be a hell of a lot more money. Uh, so if it is a wooden viv, take the time to prep it and seal it prior to the snake going in. You It, it will pay you dividends big time. Uh, temperament this girl she's okay the other girl she's a bitch it's lucky dip um, they can be a bit standoffish and a bit territorial in the viv she seems okay now she's out I'm taking it very steady with her I'm not pushing her or rushing her in any way she can sit as comfortably as she likes she's certainly not pet material where I'd say to somebody who is a beginner or even a next step snake oh here come and take this because it's an import we need to go through this process whoever takes it needs to be an experienced keeper ready to work with this snake to try and bring it on she is carrying good weight so I'm quite happy with that and I'm sure that the process will continue to be problem free as it has been so far but you just you don't know they can throw up surprises they are uh, a bit more involving as a snake definitely do your research if you can find captive bred always go for them but also make sure that you trust the breeder there are some unscrupulous dudes out there who will cross stuff and not tell you and just because it looks like something you you don't know um this is a uh guyana red tail um but it could easily be a Suriname. you just you don't know all i know is it's not a common uh, and it's pretty obvious that it's not a common um so we don't get any data with them the importers rarely send that sort of data unless you're down there shipping it yourself you've got no chance um keep watching the videos do your research uh have a look at the website which is www.snakesandadders.co.uk to see what we're all about and we'll keep the videos coming cheers